What do you dream for? That less people have to say goodbye too soon to people they love. I had heard about Theranos and Elizabeth Holmes. But you know, her story is so compelling. She was going to herald a revolution in medical treatment in this country. It was obviously such an incredible story, a woman creating this $9 billion company. Everyone worshipped the ground she walked on. She could do no wrong. She was the next Steve Jobs. The idea with the Edison was to stick the lab inside the box. She wanted Edison devices in every home in America. This could be the apple of healthcare. You all are part of something that is going to change our world. What higher purpose is there? Elizabeth came to me, and she described her idea. It's impossible, physically. Elizabeth was lying about the accuracy of the blood tests. It's all a show. She didn't want anybody to see what was going on in there. We don't need to explain ourselves to competitive companies. She aligned herself with very powerful men who succumbed to a certain charm. She was deceiving investors to the tune of $400 million. It comes back to fake it until you make it. There was definitely something going on behind the scenes. She had bulletproof glass on their windows. Anything I typed was watched. It was very scary. Like, what are they trying to hide? The mantra in Silicon Valley is move fast, break things. That's not the way you approach science that's going to be impacting people's lives. Quite frankly, people can die. It snowballed into this crazy situation. In a panic, I went and bought a burner phone. I called the Wall Street Journal. What is coming out of her mouth is not reality. She never thought she had any limits. She was going to conquer the world. This was real lunacy. Tell us a secret. I don't have many secrets. I'm... She was briefly hailed as the world's youngest female billionaires. She wore the same black outfits day in and day out. She wore turtlenecks because she idolized Steve Jobs. And at the top of her career, she employed over 100 people and her company Theranos was valued at more than $10 billion. Shortly after, many whistleblowers within the company and external journalists began to uncover malicious actions by Holmes and her company that eventually led to criminal charges for frauding investors, doctors, and even patients. To begin debunking Holmes's rise to power and quick demise, we must travel to her early beginnings. She was born in the capital city of the U.S., Washington, D.C., in 1984. Her father was a vice president for the energy company Enron, and her mother was a congressional committee staffer. Elizabeth developed an interest in computer programming at the start of high school, and she claimed to have started her first business selling C++ compilers to Chinese universities. In 2002, she joined Stanford University's Chemical Engineering School, and by the end of freshman year, she was working at a laboratory in the Genome Institute of Singapore and tested for respiratory symptoms by collecting blood samples with syringes. Midway through college, she took a brave decision to drop out of Stanford and use the rest of her tuition money for seed funding in the, her new healthcare tech startup that would later be known as Theranos. Her master plan began through her motivation to democratize healthcare and extract advanced medical tests only by using a single drop of blood. Her fear of needles was evident through her mission to begin this company. She sought out opinions and feedback by many medical professors at Stanford University who told her that her idea was impossible to be done. She didn't take no for an answer and persuaded top influential figures such as the former Secretary of State George Shultz to join the company's board of directors. She was able to convince America's most powerful men to see her as the next tycoon of Silicon Valley. Venture capitalists flooded money into her business and by the end of 2010, she was able to raise $92 million in venture capital. Elizabeth remained very secretive about her personal life and business operations. 
It is even rumored that she mixed business with pleasure after allegedly having a romantic relationship with her soon-to-be chief operating officer, Ramesh Sunny Balwini. He was 19 years older than her at the time, and he had a wife. So, was Elizabeth Holmes a master of deceit? How was she able to pull off enormous fraud that led investors to lose millions of dollars? What are the implications to ethical standards in business? And what can we learn from this story? Are you one of these people that love blood tests? No, it grosses me out. I have a very bad relationship with needles. As soon as I sit, I start to hyperventilate. You know it's coming. And you know it's gonna hurt. And I feel this sliver of steel going into my arm. And then I just feel that prick. <laughs> and what happens when they miss the vein? Oh, then they get to do it all over again. Can't find a vein in that arm, so let's try the other arm. In the span of four hours, I got pricked like over 20 times. Why do they need that much blood? They're overdoing it. Well, I was wondering if you would take a blood test for us, which is one drop of blood. One drop? Bring it on. All set. Okay. That's it. How are you feeling? Feeling good. The same little thing can do exactly what the other vials did? Yeah. That's like life changing. That's great. Now, let's talk about Theranos. Theranos is a private technology co corporation founded in 2003 by Elizabeth Holmes. At the age of 19, Holmes quitted Stanford to found her own business. Her idea was to offer to the masses an extensive and performant blood test that would only require a very small amount of blood. This test would only cost $2.9 instead of $50. Her invention, Edison, was considered to be a medical breakthrough. The idea was to have a lab in a chip. So basically, the doctor would only take a drop of blood from your finger and then the microchip would analyze all the diseases you could have. The mission and goal of the company was to offer the possibility to the consumers to find out what diseases they have on time. So no one would ever say goodbye too soon again or no one would ever wish to have known before. By 2014, Theranos was considered to be one of the most famous companies in the world. Therefore, the question is, how Elizabeth Holmes has achieved su such success? First, in 2004, the headquarter of Theranos was in Silicon Valley. Many scientists, engineers and doctors joined the Theranos and started working there. After the same year, Theranos raised $6.9 million of dollars in early founding. The company value was already $30 million. Of dollars. In 2007, the company valuation hit it $197 million of dollars. After it raised an additional $43 million of dollars in early founding. In 2010, after further rounds of funding, Theranos was valued at $1 billion. And finally, in 2014, the company reached its peak. The, the, the company worth was $9 billion. Therefore, Holmes became a multi-billionaire, as she owned 50% of the stakes of Theranos. So, in, to summing up, Theranos has thrived thanks to the connections and the talent that Silicon Valley owns, the massive investments in the companies, and also the, the leadership of Holmes that made believe to the masses and to the company that she owned a medical breakthrough. Some call Theranos the apple of healthcare, but nothing is as good as it seems. Everything changed when the Wall Street Journal published an article questioning the validity of Theranos' technology. It was revealed when consumers get to get their blood tested, it had to be done intravenously instead of a simple prick in the finger for no given explanation. And when these samples were received in Theranos, some of them were processed by Edison. But since 
this machine could only perform a few tests, the samples were then diluted and placed on commercial lab machines. This resulted in a completely unethical practice where Theranos gave inaccurate results to customers on diseases as serious as cancer. Then several employees came forward with other unethical practice, including fake testing in front of investors, where they would take out their blood and pretend Edison was performing the test but when they took the investors out of the room, they took the test and placed them on commercial lab machines to get tested and came up with these fake results. Then, in March 2016, the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services announced plans to enact sanctions that included suspending Holmes and Balwani from owning or operating a lab, and they will revoke uh, the Theranos lab. They eventually received lawsuits from Walgreens and other important investors leading to the bankruptcy and shutdown of Theranos. Finally, in March 2018, the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission charged Elizabeth Holmes and Sonny Balwani with fraud, and the trial was set for this year but has been delayed by the pandemic. Hi, so uh, now it's the time to make a connection to the course, Professional Ethics. Um, first of all, I'd like to pinpoint out the negative aspects that Elizabeth went through the, her company Theranos. Uh, first of all, it's all about ethics in business. Ethics plays an important role in, in every career that we want to pursue, regarding it's an entrepreneurial activity or employ ourselves into a large corporation. Uh, first of all, she had a toxic workplace, a really toxic workplace, uh, cannot ensure a company sustainability. Uh, she holds a sustained fraud based on, on, on lying and, 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 and improper ideas. Um, therefore, her mission was actually a sham and um, it led to an inevitable negative outcome which uh, was bankruptcy and then um, lawsuits for fraudulent activities. Furthermore, she had a hostile culture, a pressure a pressured attitude towards um, achieving goals no matter the negative aspects, but most importantly, she didn't care ab at all about the well-being of, of her employees. Um, we're currently in our undergraduate studies, um, it's uh, really important to see this type of courses such as professional ethics as we're going to pursue our own dreams um, regarding a career-wise career or our, our own entrepreneurial activity. Um, so we should follow um, some recommendations such as our practices cannot clash with your values, we need to see their strong foundation of core values. We need to foster a sense of support and a trustful environment within our, our environment. So uh, fraudulent activities such as secrecy and surveillance um, needs to be uh, taken away from uh, our corporate life. And also Elizabeth constantly undermine employees. It should be the other way around. Uh, we should foster employees to constantly challenge ourselves in order to secure uh, the company's sustainability. This documentary is really interesting as it proposes an ethical dilemma that some companies might face in a certain point in time. Elizabeth Holmes' primary mission was to change the world by leading a revolution in medical treatment where patients were able to check their own healthcare information in order to prevent future diseases and pathologies. However, Elizabeth noticed how the results from Edison Machine exhibited wrong assumptions and still decided to carry on with the project as she believed in it. Taking a quote from Thomas Edison saying, fake it until you make it. Here we want to come to the point, does the greater good justify the means? Well, in this case, it clearly doesn't because millions of people's lives were put at risk by submitting themselves to those tests. Plus, Theranos was a completely fraud. Most of the testing was performed in labs. A few samples were analyzed uh, through the Edison machine, and the results were not even reliable. Elizabeth managed to procrastinate this information from 2003 to 2018, and it still was one of the most profitable companies in the world. How did she do it? Well, Theranos wanted forced to communicate any kind of description to the public, as the internal forces in Theranos expressed this as a trade secrecy that could benefit competition. Moreover, they could run this show due to the company's nature, 
because art companies may decide to remain private so they can be less transparent to the public, whereas public companies have to report to investors every quarter. And why did so many important individuals invest in the company without a clear demonstration of the product? Because they believe in her. They believe in her purpose. As, po as pointed out in the doc, people are generally driven by a story that moves, that moves them and generates an emotional attraction rather than attending to pure facts. So now regarding recent news and articles related to the case. So on February 11th of 2020, a US judge dismissed four wire fraud charges accusing Holmes and an associate of misleading patients about the ability of their blood tests. But these were deemed or these were dismissed because patients who took the test were paid by their insurance and thus stated not to be deprived or of any money or property while performing these services. Then the next update is that Holmes' trial was set to begin in the summer, but due to COVID, it has been pushed forward to March 9 of 2021. And then the next update and the last one is that there was a request in September, so last month, which was granted by a Californian federal prosecutor uh, for basically Holmes to have the ability to be examined by two experts, a psychologist and a psychiatrist. And these tests consist of two days worth of monitoring and they have to be recorded and they have to be recorded because the status of this case is so high. So if anything is found, the, just, the judge must view it obviously. And so these tests were asked uh, to be done by the defense team of Holmes in order to hopefully find some expert evidence relating to a mental disease or defect because obviously if she is found to have uh, a mental disease or so, this would obviously impact the degree of the charges heavily. As she awaits federal trial, her whereabouts have been a mystery until now. Hi, Elizabeth, I'm Lisa Guerrero with Inside Edition. We'd like to know if you had an opportunity to watch the documentary about you. We found Holmes living in a luxury rental building with her fiance, who is heir to a hotel fortune. Elizabeth, a lot of young women looked up to you, especially in tech. What would you have to say to those young women? She spends her days with her fiance and their husky, Balto, enjoying hikes and taking long walks in local parks. Do you have any comment at all to the investors that say they lost millions of dollars because of you? A lot of people think it was heartless that you were partying at Burning Man when your company was closing its doors. She's traded in her black turtleneck for a more casual look, but as soon as these neighbors heard her speak, there was no mistaking that unforgettable voice. Is that Elizabeth Holmes? <laughs> I didn't know until she spoke. As soon as she opened her mouth, I was like, bingo, that is her. People seem to be obsessed with your voice. Can you set the record straight? Is your voice real or is it fake? But for now, Elizabeth Holmes is staying silent. Elizabeth Holmes has pled not guilty to fraud charges and she is expected back in court on April 22nd.